So good morning. Uh, thank you for coming to the session. My name is Jennifer ponce Poor, and I'm from Colorado. And almost everybody I've talked to is like, oh, Colorado is so beautiful. But I will tell you, Georgia is stunning. It is amazing what you have here. So kudos to all of you. And um, I hope that we get a chance to come back. So Colorado State University is north of Denver, central part of Colorado and north. So we're on the east side of the mountains. Um, and Colorado State University is a land grant. We have other land grant institutions in the room or people who work with land grants. And the reason that we're a land, the reason why the land grant connection is important is because part of what I do is my job is connect to community and try and provide support. So one of the things that I've noticed in my many years of doing work with community is that there are ways of having meetings and ways of getting people together, and it's really easy to get stuck. So how many of you have been in a meeting where you're like, I really wish we weren't talking about this one more time. I really wish we were able to take action and, and solve this problem and move forward, and I'm not sure how to do that. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today, and we're going to talk about strategic doing, and we're going to talk about why, what it is, why we can use it for sectors, and why does it work. So for those of you that have some familiar, familiarity and have used this process or are familiar with it, please feel free to ask questions or to jump in and say, hey, and this is, this is how this worked in our community. So quick background, just so you know where I come from, is I have a background in philosophy, which is values and social policy, always interested in how communities work together. I have a MS in systems theory, and the reason that matters is because it's the idea that there's a lot of interdependencies in how do complex systems move forward. So I applied it to urban systems, but you can also use it for, and I'm, now that I'm in the workforce system, I use it for workforce systems. And I have a master's in adult ed, very interested in how you learn by doing experiential learning, and so that's part of how my background applies to this. I have, I've been a land use planner and community developer. I was in economic development, went from that into workforce development, and then was recruited to work for the university. So I have a little bit of background. So I've talked to several of you, and so I think we can kind of connect the dots between where we've been and kind of where we're going. One of the questions I asked when I was getting my second master's in adult education is what are the nodes and the networks that create an innovative workforce? Northern Colorado is sort of known for its innovation. I was trying to figure out what is it? You know, like if we can figure this out and crack the nut on how this community does it, can I then transpose that and figure out how to apply that to another community? We'd have to adapt it, but I thought maybe if I could just get the basics and figure it out. But I wondered, is it about the businesses? Is one of the critical nodes the businesses in our community and the work that they do to create an innovative workforce? Was it the workforce system? Do we need better training programs? Was it our responsibility as a workforce system to solve this problem? Was it education's role? Was it their job to create this innovation? And is that where it started? Or was it the community in general, like the community infrastructure, high-speed broadband, better roads, that sort of thing? Was it the community? And what I found, the innovation and positive changes didn't occur in any one organization. The secret sauce was not in the nodes, but it was in the network. What I found is that the more people work together throughout this organization and throughout like northern Colorado, the more they work together, the more that they built trust and the more that they could work together. So it almost didn't matter what organization it was. It was the way they connected and the way they communicated that created the capacity. So when we talk about networks, this is from Connected, the surprising power of our social networks and how they shape our lives. How many of you are like social media, social networks, we're understanding that people are connecting outside of our normal organizational structures, right, and our normal titles. So that's part of what this does. But what, what you see here says, well, a network, like a group, is a collection of people. It includes something more. It's a specific, a specific set of connections between people in the group. These ties and the particular pattern of these ties are often more important than the individual people themselves. This allows groups to do things that a disconnected collection of individuals cannot. So if you've been in a room and you have a group together, don't know each other, it's hard to get things done. The more history and experience you have working together, the easier it is.